find this man. You find this man. I've been in a Harrison Ford mood as of the last month. Talking about the Indiana Jones movies has made me think about the other movies that he's done, and my brain decided, why don't we talk about The Fugitive, which is one of my personal favorites. Directed by Andrew Davis, starring Harrison Ford, Tommy Lee Jones, amongst many other people. It tells the story of a man named Dr. Richard Kimball, a respected vascular surgeon in Chicago, who's falsely accused and convicted of murdering his wife and given the death penalty. But along the way to prison, his prison transport bus crashes, and he goes on the run, desperate to prove his innocence, while being chased by a U.S. Marshal, Sam Gerard, played by Tommy Lee Jones. On the surface, it may seem like a very simple mystery action thriller, but the way it's done, it's thrilling, it's exciting, and there's a really good sense of intrigue and mystery with Richard Kimball's murder case. And it's also an adaptation of a television series of the same name from the 1960s. In regards to my history with The Fugitive, this was the first adult movie that I saw when I was a little kid. Now, when I say adult, I'm not talking about sexual stuff necessarily, and that's a whole other conversation. I'm talking about a movie or a show where it wasn't family-friendly or kid-related. I must have been a about six, seven, or eight years old. And a friend of my parents at the time was watching the movie, and he invited me in to see it because he knew that I was very into trains, and when I saw the bus slash train crash, it was the first action special effects set piece that I had ever seen in my life. I had a transportive experience, and I would watch that sequence on repeat on VHS countless, countless times. And it got to a point where my parents would start to laugh at me, and including my grandparents also, but it was just something about how realistic and tense it was that just made me want to watch it again and again and again. But thankfully, as I've gotten older, I started to watch the movie past that point, and I would appreciate the story that it was telling with the characters. And since I mentioned that to start it off, the two lead characters, played by Tommy Lee Jones and Harrison Ford, this is, I think, is what really is the heart and soul of the movie. They're both on opposite ends of the spectrum. Kimball is a wanted man on the run. Sam Gerard, a U.S. Marshal, is just a man doing his job. And what really ensues after the plot takes off after the bus crash are these two guys trying to outmaneuver each other in a cat and mouse chase. And it's very clear in the movie right out the gate that Richard Kimball is innocent. He didn't kill his wife. He's being set up. The police and the DA's office are not really thinking about what they're seeing on the surface. They're just so convinced and blinded by their hubris that, no, he's just guilty because he wants money from his wife. And with the main character in a story like this, it would be very easy for him or her to come off as very unlikable and melodramatic and unsympathetic. Not the case in this movie, though. I think Harrison Ford doesn't get as much credit as I think he should for Richard Kimball. He's very sympathetic and very warm, kind, and gentle, but he's also smart, and he uses his head as he tries to stay one step ahead of his pursuers. Other actors might be tempted to go very melodramatic with the crying and the screaming. There is one scene where you could see it in a very similar fashion, but the way Harrison Ford acts out in this scene, it feels very authentic. You find this man. You find this man. How tall is he? He took everything from me. Oh, Jesus. What do you weigh? God! What color was his hair? One of those moments where you as the viewer are going, oh, that... That sucks, man, jeez. This is one of Harrison Ford's best acting performances I've ever seen from him. He's very subdued, like in the scene where he finally confronts his wife's killer on the train. Just the small subtleties in his facial expressions, you could tell that his blood is really starting to boil, and Harrison Ford channels it perfectly. But also on the opposite end of that spectrum, we have Tommy Lee Jones as Sam Gerard, a U.S. Marshal that's tasked with hunting down Richard Kimball. He even won an Oscar award for this movie, which still kind of shocks me whenever I read that. This movie got nominated for, I believe, seven Oscar awards. The Best Supporting Actor nod was the only one it took home. When you think about Oscar-worthy performances, Tommy Lee Jones and The Fugitive probably doesn't come to mind, but I think it's pretty clear in the movie when you watch it with that knowledge. He got this award because his performance feels very real and authentic. He doesn't feel like he's acting up for the camera. He's not being showy. You also see the progression of his character throughout the film as he starts to look further into the details of Kimball's murder case. He starts off as a man doing his job and as somebody who... I don't bargain. Take it from Agent K. If he doesn't bargain, he doesn't. And the best example of the motivations from the two lead characters is in the first standoff that they have with each other in the tunnel. I didn't kill my wife! I don't care! Kind of reminds me of the movie Rush by Ron Howard in one specific way. You feel for both characters and you want them to succeed, but you don't necessarily feel a preference towards the other, at least I don't personally. And that's something I think is really, really hard to do, and I think the writers of this film found the right combination of making you feel for both characters. And what I really like about the character of Sam Gerard, besides his easygoing yet serious attitude, and also the humorous moments that he has, Newman, yes? What are you doing? I'm thinking. Well, think me up a cup of coffee and a chocolate donut with some little sprinkles on it, will you, while you're thinking? So he just says it with a straight face and you just can't help but laugh. You lose someone over there, Hondo? He's still skinny.
But it's when Kimball returns to Chicago to look for his wife's killer, Gerard starts to question, wait a second, if he really is guilty, why would he come back to Chicago where all these police officers are looking for him? Why would he risk getting recaptured by these people? He starts to question his own ethos and trying to figure out how he's gonna go about trying to find this guy. Nowadays, if you were to make this movie, you probably wouldn't see something like that. It would probably be very, very stoic and very standoffish saying, no, this guy did it, no, this guy did it. But they might throw slight little hints of him being uncertain about whether or not that person actually is guilty. But they make it pretty clear, and he's pretty open about it, that he's willing to be proven wrong if it turns out to be the case. And Tommy Lee Jones plays it perfectly. That moment will never get old. <laughs> How come they turn off the water? As for the rest of the supporting cast, they don't really get as much to do as opposed to Ford and Jones, but they do have enough screen time to make somewhat of an impression. People like Joe Pantaleano, Andreas Katsoulis, Joran Crabbe, Seal Award, which was the first movie I ever saw her in, and early appearances from Jane Lynch and Julianne Moore, with the latter of who plays a doctor who becomes suspicious of Richard when he changes the procedure orders on that young boy in the hospital. Which, by the way, that scene where Richard Kimball helps the young boy with the fractured aorta, I have always always loved that scene. He's posing as a janitor at this hospital, trying to figure out where exactly the one-armed man is, and then he sees this young boy being checked, and he starts saying stuff like, check the film, check the film, just trying to not draw attention to himself. Then he's recruited by Julianne Moore to bring this boy upstairs, and he starts looking at the x-ray, and he realizes what's going on with this kid, and he changes the orders and hands him off to the surgeon team. For all he knows, and for all we as the audience know, this might be the last chance he has of being a doctor. And he finally gets one last chance to help this kid and risk getting caught. Bye bye, Joel. I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry. And also, Joe Pantaleano, who's just about likable in anything that he's in, he's got some great stuff in here too, especially his back and forth with Sam Gerard. Whoa, whoa, you're never gonna get that. You call Judge Rubin, you tell him I want a whole bunch of phone taps, Why are you and I'll me? call him up later what? and tell him on who, if I'm in a good Why mood. Why don't you yell at her sometime? Sam, what? Atta boy. But not only do we have great character moments, this movie also has some really, really intense sequences in action. Andrew Davis, the director who made movies like Holes with Shia LaBeouf and Under Siege with Steven Seagal, does a fantastic job from behind the camera helming these sequences. And a lot of that also is due to the cinematography by Michael Chapman. They both make really great use of the Chicago location with very grainy, realistic imagery, which feels like you're watching it from a news helicopter. At least for me, I could tell that it was shot on film. And this was 1993, so digital wasn't really as common back then as it is today, but it makes the film feel like you're actually there in a real place, in a real location. Andrew Davis knows how to make an exciting action sequence or scene feel so, so in the moment. Like in particular when Richard jumps off of the dam into the water and Sam Gerard's just standing there going, uh, or when Gerard and the marshals are chasing Richard out of the building and he almost gets caught in the security doors. Close the blast doors! Close the blast doors! But as far as the best action set pieces is the bus slash train crash. This is one of the best filmmaking achievements that I have ever witnessed in film. They actually filmed a bus rolling down a hill onto a railroad track and a freight train slamming right into it. The sound design and camera shots, in particular when the bus rolls down the hill, seriously, check this out. That last particular shot where you're seeing it from inside the bus finally landing on the ground, at least for me, it makes you feel like you're actually in the bus that literally crashed down the hill. Extremely realistic and not something you would see in today's day and age, particularly the train crash where we see the train getting closer and closer to the bus and Richard jumps just right before the bus is crushed by the train and we see the one diesel engine break off and crash into a siding. It's exciting, it's tense, it's heart pounding, it's absolutely incredible. It would be very tempting in today's day and age to make this sequence with CGI effects, which, don't get me wrong, I'm not against using that at all, as long as you can make it look believable and realistic. But since this particular set piece was done with practical effects, you don't really see that kind of stuff anymore, and it kind of makes me long for that in some ways. Not to go too deep into this topic, I don't have a preference on either or. My stance is, whether or not you go full practical or full CG or a little bit of both. If a set of filmmakers can make it seem very tangible and believable, that's all I really care about. I could not care less 
what direction they go in. But that's besides the point, though. Now, at the climax of the movie, it all comes to a head when Richard realizes that his friend, Charles Nichols, was the man behind his wife's killing, because Richard discovers that the drug that Charles was trying to push for, Provastic or RDU-90 or whatever, was causing liver damage in the patients that it was being prescribed to. And they tried to cover it up by hiring Frederick Sykes, played by Andreas Katsoulis, but they ended up killing his wife instead. And Sam Gerard manages to talk Richard down by revealing that, I know you're innocent, Richard. I know all about Frederick Sykes, Charles Nichols. I can prove it to everybody out there. Give it up, Richard. It's time to stop running. It's an extremely satisfying payoff because when you see Richard's reaction to when Sam says, I know you're innocent, we as the audience feel like Richard, very cathartic. And he may or may not be able to be a doctor again, and his wife is still gone, but he can at least walk away knowing that he was able to prove that he was innocent. I thought you didn't care. I know. <laughs> Don't tell anybody, okay? Tell Sam Gerard I'm going home now. I'm taking my vacation. Any problems I have, it's really just one. The two detectives investigating Richard's murder case, they are just some of the dumbest, dumbest cops I've ever seen portrayed in film. The actors play their parts just fine, and the one guy in particular was actually Detective Wurtz in The Dark Knight. Now what, you need someone to shake it for you? Now, had they not gone about it this way, we wouldn't have gotten the really great scenes that ensued after Richard is convicted, so you gotta let it slide. But it's something that's always bothered me. You guys cannot see the evidence right in front of you that this guy is innocent. He came home, saw his wife murdered, had a fight with this one-armed man. You were just so convinced that this guy wants money? Are you that stupid? Especially when you see Sam Gerard is able to think critically and look more into the context of what's going on, like in particular when he calls out the one prison guard on his BS story. These cops are either just stupid or they're blinded by their own hubris. Or maybe it's both, but either way, uh, yeah. It's just, it's just obnoxious. So overall, my thoughts on The Fugitive, it's very tightly packed and edited, doesn't waste any time, it's got two likable leads in Jones and Ford, and I think it's one of the best action films of the 1990s and one of my personal favorites. While it may be dated in some ways by today's standards, and particularly the opening sequence, which does seem like a PowerPoint presentation, and the score by James Newton Howard, which by the way, is a fantastic score, but in some ways it does definitely feel like a product of the 1990s. Not in a bad way, but it is a little bit noticeable. All in all, I think The Fugitive is a great movie. What are you guys' thoughts on The Fugitive? Whatever the case is, comment below and tell me your thoughts. Hope you guys have a happy Easter, and I'll see you all in the next video.